Hey everyone, Jason here from Off the Beaten Path, and this video was filmed on the Stockton Dunes in the RV area. So here we are, just um, about to enter Stockton Beach, airing down. Now we actually aired down sooner than you really needed to. Um, as you can see, this is a sealed road on the way in, and there's a designated air down area that we'll get to uh, fairly soon. Um, that four-wheel drive coming the other way, um, there's some local guys that operate uh, quad bike tours on the dunes, well worth checking out, um, really good operation and his vehicle was actually one of the only ones I've seen that's a troopy with a permanent air system uh, so it can air down and air up on the run. So this is the main sort of gate area where they control the access and where the bitumen ends and just past here there's actually a designated air down area so you could stop in that car park on the right or just up here on the right where you can see those other vehicles that we're heading towards now that's actually designated air down base so uh, don't do what we did um, drive in a little further and air down there now this was my first time driving on dunes so I don't pretend to be any kind of sand or dune driving expert far from it and we aired down to 20 psi and I thought that would be fine um, and generally speaking it wasn't too bad but um, as you'll see certainly got a bit of a lesson on air pressures tire pressures and how they behave on the sand so straight away the sand here at the, the main entrance was actually pretty soft and you can see the cars working pretty hard and already you get some sort of appreciation for just how how big this area is. Um, I'd looked on a, on a map before going there and um, that really didn't prepare you for just how, how huge this area is. It's a massive area. If you're remotely anywhere near, um, I highly recommend going and checking it out because it's, it's well worth it. There's quite a variety of terrain and um, as far as sand dunes go, um, nothing too crazy. Right up there is actually um, the local rangers, so they do they do patrol uh, the dune area, and you do need a permit. Uh, so look, we got a three-day permit, and it was 33 bucks. Now, as you can see, we hit that steep little rise on the dune there, pretty hard and fast, and sort of got right up to the top of the crest, and we're stuck. Tires just dug in, and we're not going anywhere. We're not going forwards. We're not going backwards tried rocking it backwards and forwards so it's definitely time to get the max tracks out so while I'm doing that you can see our cameraman there panning around and you can see this is right on the beach as well um, certain areas where you have access right down to the water and other areas mainly in the south and further to the north where at the moment you don't have access So while I might be a bit of a novice for driving on sand dunes, you can see I, I didn't bury the wheels too much. Got the shovel out, just dug a, a couple of shovelfuls of sand out of the front of each of the tyres. Um, it um, you know, didn't look like it needed too much. And um, again, we've got four max tracks. You can see the other two sitting on the roof there. But um, I sort of thought uh, I'd probably get away with just putting one in front of each of the rear tyres because the front tyres weren't too far down in the sand at all particularly after I dug a bit of sand out and as you saw there a little bit of wheel spin almost textbook Max tracks work exactly as advertised a little bit of wheel spin on that front wheel the rear wheels dug straight in so this is the same sort of recovery but from the GoPro mounted to the car drove straight out so that took all of about five minutes so look if you're anything like me and a bit of a novice driving on sound max tracks and a shovel um, I highly recommend taking them you can see some quad bikers there on the right hand side so there's a little bit of an area there that was marked out with some cones just to let 
vehicle drivers know to stay clear and as you can see on the left there there's a few people out on the dunes on this particular day we didn't have a lot of time um, on this particular trip we, we spent sort of an hour, hour and a half just touring around um, you could easily spend a, a lot longer having some fun on these dunes Most of the hills, particularly along this back section, are, are, are fairly gentle, um, so you really don't have you know, a lot of opportunity to, uh, to get yourself into trouble, at least in this, this area here. The depth of the other tyre tracks uh, yeah, it certainly proved to be a good indicator of how soft or, or not soft the sound might be. And just, yeah, you can see there just on the left, um, another group of quad bikes, so you definitely want to want to keep your eyes open. Now, we couldn't find anything that said sand flags were mandatory and in fact most of the vehicles didn't have sand flags on Stockton Beach. Um, so it certainly would have been a good idea. We didn't actually, I do have one, but we didn't have it with us and um, yeah, certainly uh, fortunately wasn't too much of an issue. So this area is sort of down close to the water and on the left hand side there those signs are actually noting camp areas. You can see a campfire there, a uh, designated campfire spot there on the left. Um, so you can actually camp at Stockton Beach which I didn't know prior to visiting. Um, obviously at the moment particularly with COVID pre-booking is mandatory. There's some more campsites there on the right that we were just driving past. And some more again there on the right so there's quite a few of them and pretty close to the water as well and as you can see certain certain areas you do get these um, these puddles of water that's um, come through the sand so that's something to certainly keep an eye out for some more camp spots there so they're pretty open i could imagine when there's a bit of wind blowing it uh, mightn't be the most pleasant of campsites but uh, certainly the day we were there it was blue skies not too windy magic place to be camping and you can see the ocean just over the back of those dunes there so and you can see that fence there so this is the area where you don't have vehicle access down onto the beach in this area uh, they're sort of protecting those dunes where they're trying to revegetate and you can see another one of those uh, pools of water that seem to pop up in this section of the dunes We drove south from the main entrance and, um, and now we've turned around and, and heading north. Now this section here is, is where we did find um, one of the steeper dunes that uh, we came across and there are a few other people here doing some runs up the dunes so that's another Pajero there that's uh, just headed up the dune ahead of us and looks pretty easy doesn't it so we thought we'd follow them up and um, at every expectation we'd drive straight up exactly like they just did and we had a good run up and I think because of that we almost got there but not quite so at this point running the tyres at 20 psi you can see there we've dug in a little bit but been able to reverse down 
And look, while I'm no expert on dune driving, one thing I do know is if you go up a dune and you get stuck, you want to reverse straight back down following your tyre tracks. You don't want to turn sideways um, and, and try and drive across the dune. You want to just reverse all the way back down uh, and then line yourself up for another go. second go here tried to choose a line that was less steep but had less of a run up and yeah that was pretty much doomed to failure uh, right from the get go with no real run up there so I thought we better reverse back up line ourselves up and and have a, a really good go took that same line and once again, so almost made it to the top, but didn't actually quite get there. And this particular time, we did get ourselves pretty well stuck again. So that engine sound you can hear is me trying to go forwards and backwards and going nowhere in either case. I only tried a couple of times again. There was no point digging the vehicle in any further than it had already dug itself in. So this is the same run, just shot the video camera. And yeah, that's pretty much, and you can see there the reversing lights are on and we're going nowhere. Trying to go forwards, trying to go reverse, going nowhere. Fortunately getting out of this was, was pretty straightforward. Literally just jumped out, grabbed the shovel, removed a little bit of sand from behind the tyres and um, was able to rock backwards and forwards a little bit in situ there to sort of compress the sand a little bit and then uh, and then drive out so there you go there's proof I had the shovel in my hand guys up the top there are probably looking at me saying what is this guy doing he's got no idea So yeah, that's uh, reversing back down, so as you can see, it dug itself in pretty well. So while I've been having fun getting the car back out, one of the locals had had a word uh, to my wife and said, what tyre pressure is your husband running? Because he doesn't look like he knows what he's doing. Um, and they suggested quite strongly it was that gentleman there in the Prado, again making it look pretty easy. Uh, should be running at least 15, if not 14 or even a bit lower PSI. So I'd had three goes at 20. I was more than willing to listen to some advice and uh, see if we could get a different outcome. So there we are, letting another five PSI out of the tyres. So drop from 20 down to 15. And I really at this point wasn't super confident that just 5 PSI, I guess you say just 5, it's, it's a quarter of the pressure that was in the tyres, was going to make too much of a difference. I actually thought my vehicle with the rear bar and everything was just a bit heavier and that's why we weren't making it up. But took the other five PSI out and uh, turned around and, and lined up for another go. Took the original line this time. And as you can see there, pretty much didn't even look like struggling. Just drove straight up. So that's 15 PSI versus 20. Huge difference. Car worked a lot less hard going up the dune wasn't even looking like getting stuck so certainly know what kind of tyre pressure I'll be running next time I'm driving on sand dunes that's for sure same run again just shot from outside and as you can see there made it look so much easier
almost like we didn't fail the first three times. So Stockton Beach, I should have mentioned, just in case you don't happen to already know where it is, uh, is just north of Newcastle on the coast, obviously. So as I said, if you find yourself in the area, highly recommend setting aside an hour or two at least um, to go and check it out. Um, very scenic. Uh, always seems to be a lot of people there. The people we ran into were really helpful. Um, so yeah, well worth well worth checking it out. So just to prove it wasn't a fluke, we picked up the camera person and uh, and thought we'd do one last run up this dune yet again to prove that the uh, the last run wasn't a fluke and once again just um, drove straight up so we continued heading north and as you've seen a lot of it uh, is very a lot of the terrain there is just very open sand dunes but certainly in this section here where you've got access to the beach um, there's a few tracks through the vegetated dunes and um, these were reasonably bumpy, you can see the cars moving pretty well. And you can see the quad bikers get in here as well, so again you've got to keep your eye open um, for those guys all the time and just be conscious that there are people other than four wheel drives using this area. people there fishing. And honestly, as I said, we didn't have a lot of time, so we kind of just drove in, did a big loop and, and, and made our way back out. You could easily spend a lot more time here. There's a few people um, also out and about like there was on the day we were there. Um, the area is big enough that uh, you know you, you, you'll find a spot uh, for yourself. And you can see there clearly this is one of the areas where you got access right down to the beach. We've pretty much reached as far north as uh, you can go right at the moment. And just making our way back to the exit. So you can see they've got the fence in place there. So you used to be able to drive further down the beach and, and exit up there near Annie Bay, I think it is. Uh, at the moment that's closed for revegetation and yeah we're just heading here straight back to where we actually uh, entered so yeah we came in via Lavis Lane and um, on the corner of Lavis Lane Nelson Bay Road, there's a service station there and that's where we picked up our three day permit from. So that was the, the easiest place to get it. Well thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you did please leave a like or subscribe to the channel or do both. Until the next time, thanks again.